didn't want to hit you. You think that was really you? There are so many people right now that if you pray for them, they have no idea. They have no idea why God spared their life. And they and they don't they can't even answer it. But it was somebody that God can trust to say, call this person's name out in prayer right now. And when they did it, God answered that person's prayer, and the person over there didn't even pray. He did it for them because of you. <laughs> Welcome you here to Fuel Station Church. We are so blessed and honored that you have taken time out of your busy schedule to connect with us. I'm here in, in the uh, sanctuary with some amazing, awesome disciples. If you have not had a chance to uh, like and subscribe to our channel, we do ask you to do so at this time. We are also located here in the city of Buffalo, New York. If you're ever here, we would love to meet you here in person. Uh, we've been in a powerful series entitled The Steps to a Transformational Prayer Life. And today we're going to go into episode nine. All right, Jesus disciples, I'm going to ask you to go to James chapter five, if you can. Um, we're going to go over um, our steps. Uh, we, we've been talking about the different steps to a transformational prayer life. Um, I want to bring us back to what Christ said. He said, first of all, he says, uh, find a secret place that you and him can meet. And in that secret place, he said, again, don't broadcast this prayer everywhere. He says, find this place where you can meet with him. And then he gave us uh, some steps and some model, uh, a model that we can all follow in, in our prayer life. So uh, we already covered eight of them. So let's go over those eight. Let's see if you guys can remember what is step number one. Seeing God as father. Excellent. Step two. Seek his will for your life. Step three. To ask for your daily provisions. Good. Step four. Ask for forgiveness. Good. Step five. Have faith in God. Good. Step six. Lead us away from temptation. Good. Step seven. Persistent. Be persistent. Good. Step eight. Pour out your soul. Okay. All right. Somebody was studying. Thank you for that. All right. Who? Anybody here been pouring out your soul last week? All right. Now. Again, <laughs> now, again, I just tell y'all from personal experience, pouring out your soul is one of the best things you can do in prayer. Remember, the scripture says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Stop holding in the, your cares. And, you know, the, if the devil can keep you or make you feel ashamed to go in, in prayer and really cast out your, you know, pouring out your soul, you will be walking around going to work, walking around your family, your neighbors, and you're going to have all this anxiety. Your nerves gonna be all messed up, and you guys know, like just cast it in prayer. Don't be ashamed in prayer. Be honest about uh, what you want to say. So tonight's per tonight's step is going to be uh, to pray for others. All right. So step nine is going to be pray for others. So um, today we're going to talk about this step because um, anytime we're meeting with the Lord, and once we have taken time to um, ask God for forgiveness and ask God for our daily provisions, one of the things that is scriptural that he wants us to do is pray for others. All right. And this is the area that, um, at, you know, we're going to be talking about intercessor, intercession and things like that. But in today's teaching, I really just want to give you this because I want you to think about it. You don't know how much power you have. Sometimes there is people who need you to pray for them. And I know you may be thinking, well, I, I you know, I'm, I'm nobody. Listen, you, your prayers work. Your prayers work. And one of the things that you're going to, uh, in your prayer life, make room in your prayer time to pray for other people. you will be shocked at sometimes, and you know, there's a scripture that says, uh, whatsoever you sow, you reap. Prayer is one of those things. If you are taking time to um, after you have poured out your soul before the Lord, after you ask God for your daily provisions, sometimes God will put people in your heart. And you're like, why am I thinking about this person? And what the Holy Spirit is doing is he's asking you to stand in the gap for that person and pray for them. Because that person sometimes in that moment may be so overwhelmed that they can't pray for themselves. I know this sounds elementary, but you'll be shocked at how many times the Holy Spirit is trying to get us 
to pray for somebody else, but we start saying things like, I'm too tired. I don't feel like it. Oh, that person don't need prayer. They blessed. They don't need my little old prayer. And guess what? God is like, your prayer can stop something from happening. So let me give you, uh, uh, before I go into James, let me give you a quick story. Uh, 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 you, you don't have to go to the scripture, but in Genesis, and many of you know the story, there was a gentleman by the name of Abraham. And many of you have known the story. But Abraham had this nephew named Lot. Lot was uh, caught up in Sodom and Gomorrah. So vexed in his heart because of the atmosphere of this area, Dora. And these angels come to Abraham. And Abraham pretty much is like, hey, you know, okay, who, you know, come on, hang out with us, whatever. And then the angels begin to say, um, kind of, kind of give a, give a little insight into what they were about to do. And what Abraham heard was, wait a minute, this secret you're telling me about, you guys are about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. My nephew is there. Okay, that seemed like it's no big deal. But the angel is saying, oh, we're going to destroy it. Regardless. Regardless, this place is being destroyed. So Abraham, because he's thinking about his nephew and his family, Abraham began to say things like, would you still destroy it if you found a couple of righteous people there? Many of you guys know the story. And the angel said, I wouldn't destroy it. But the angel was saying, I wouldn't destroy it because there was not any righteous people there. <laughs> so the angel said, I wouldn't destroy it. So Lot was, uh, um, Abraham was like, okay, well, if you can find 50, he said, I won't destroy it, but I can find 50. And Abraham knew there ain't 50 righteous people there. So let me bring this number down a little bit. The number got so low. That the angel said, if you can give me a cup, just the, just five, just 10, whatever, righteous people, I would not destroy it. And even in Abraham's mind, Abraham was like, hmm. oh my Lord, I got to get my nephew out of here. So because Abraham began to talk with these angels, guess what the angels did? Now I know you guys probably know the Bible already, but these angels, because of Abraham, went to Sodom because they're getting ready to destroy this area. But because another man was in standing in the gap for another person, the angel went to Sodom, saw Lot. You guys know the story. Lot brought him into the house. Uh, the men of the city tried to sleep with him. And you can read that all that in Genesis 19 if you like. But the funny thing about the story was the angels went and said, we're only here to get you out. We're about to destroy this place. And because somebody was praying and covering you, we're about to get you out before I destroy this place. Do you know how many people is their lives about to be destroyed? And if you don't pray for them. <laughs> because of this man's prayer, Lot was so messed up. He couldn't even pray for himself. Lot was on the outside of the city just feeling helpless. And it took somebody else who was connected with God to go in and get that man out of there. And guess what? Abraham did not go there to get him. Abraham's prayer did. You got co-workers right now that if you don't pray for them. <laughs> there's been times, some of you guys, I'll be home and the Holy Spirit say, pray for so-and-so, -so, pray for, pray for Jerome, pray for Kita, pray for, I just get up and pray. I don't even know the situation, but that prayer, I believe, could have stopped something that was designed to take you out. But imagine if I got lazy. I, don't, I, don't, I I'm so mad. I need to pray for myself. I I, I'm just going. Every time I pray, it's only for me. God says, you ain't even going to tap into the next level of this kingdom walk until you start learning how to pray for other people. Because there's certain healing that ain't going to happen until others pray. And I'm about to prove it to you. So let's go to James chapter 5. James chapter 5 says in verse 13. It says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Ooh. Is any merry? Let him sing. Psalms. Verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over you, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Look at verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. 
So the sick ain't the one praying. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Verse 16, confess your faults one to another and pray for who? Y'all see that? That ye may be healed. So many people are still sick because they ain't praying for each other. So there is a healing that takes place when people start praying for each other. And we're going to be a church that's going to pray for other people. We ain't going to be the type of people that only pray for ourselves. Just, oh, I just got to get mine. I got to get mine. No, the reason why maybe some things ain't opened up in our life because we're so stingy with our prayer. We only pray for us. So I learned. Do, do you know how many times I was going through a situation in my life? And out the blue, somebody will call me out the blue and say, you was on my heart. Did that happen to anybody else in here? And they start saying that they felt led to pray for me or pray for you. And other, and they have no idea what I was dealing with or going through. That's how God start working. So here, if this person would have been selfish, this person would have said, I don't have time to pray for him. Oh, he's a leader. He don't need prayer. Oh, he's blessed. He don't need me to pray. You see how we do? But guess what? Even us, me, my wife, leaders of the city. That's why a lot of times I always pray for our mayor. I pray for it because we be thinking, oh, these people don't need prayer. They're already in a position. They need more prayer. <laughs> I'm going to be the prayer. Y'all, please pray for me. Y'all, please pray for my wife. Y'all, please pray for Keila. Y'all, please pray for everybody in this room. Why? Because your prayer matters. So in your in this transformational prayer life, it, you are actually allowing God to use you to help another believer. So that's why in verse 16, when he says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This is what he's trying to show you is that when a person is really righteous and connected to God, that person prayer can do stuff, open up heaven over a person's life. And that person don't know why all of a sudden these blessings is hitting me. Well, because somebody have been praying for you. I'm clear. And I want to honor my mom on this particular because I know my mom prayed for me. I want to first thank you, mom. If you watch this, I want to thank you because I know my mom prayed for me. The way I was going when I was a teenager, <laughs> I used to hear her pray for me. Marie, I used to hear it. When I'm really ready to do my dirt, before I even knew girl, before I even knew God, I was ready to do my dirt. And I would hear her downstairs calling my name out. I'm like, I don't, it made me so uncomfortable. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to be free to do what I was going to do. I, I felt a constraint when I heard my name in prayer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all know how it is. You want to be free to do your dirt. When you hear somebody praying for you, it just put little handcuffs on your sin, you know. <laughs> you ain't as free to, you know. But anyways, I used to hear that. And when she was praying for me then, I had no idea I would be me today. But somebody was standing in the gap for me when I was stupid. <laughs> when I was saying, I don't want this stuff. I'm ready to go out in the world and have fun. I'm ready to do this. I could have been shot so many times and somebody was sitting there at the house praying for protection over me even when cars was going like this. <laughs> Bullets going like this. <laughs> do you think that was just you? Oh, you was that special that you, you looked that good that the bullet didn't want to hit you. You think that was really you? There are so many people right now that if you pray for them, they have no idea. They have no idea why God spared their life. And they, and they don't, they can't even answer it. But it was somebody that God can trust to say, call this person's name out in prayer right now. And when they did it, God answered that person's prayer and the person over there didn't even pray. He did it for them because of you. <laughs> Lord help us. And this is going to move us to intercession. At some point, I want my wife to share because she, God has really given her a great insight on this. But I'm just telling you so many times how many times I have prayed. I can tell you right now, there has been some things I have prayed specifically. And I ain't going to get into detail what it is, but I'm actually looking at some of it. Sometimes when I'm looking at some of y'all, I actually see some of my answer prayer. I just never told you. 
And I'm not taking the credit. It's just that I felt honored when God put it on my heart to pray for that. How it happened, that's not my, my, my concern. My concern was to be the one to stand the gap. Lord, do this for this person. Protect them. Lord, if this thing don't, if this ain't from you, shut it down. <laughs> All of a sudden, doors go boom. It's like, why did that door shut? Hmm. Somebody really loved you. <laughs> Have anybody ever had that ever happened to you where it seemed like everything was going good? You, you had some plans going, everything was going in the right direction, and everything was going well, and all of a sudden, it's it just, everything just dropped out. You're like, what just happened? Those angels was like, somebody prayed for you, Mr. Lot, and we got to pull you out of Sodom, because <laughs> you're about to get destroyed. <laughs> you're about to burn on fire, and you don't even know it. So come on, Mr. Lot. Let me bring you out of Sodom because of somebody else's prayer who loved you. So God says, okay, cool. Now, now Lot is saved because of somebody's prayer. So God moves us now here. Now we're here in the New Testament. We got the Holy Spirit inside. The Holy Spirit will say, uh, I, want, I want the saints to pray for Thomas. We don't, may not understand what Thomas goes through. We probably haven't even talked to him. And we start praying for Thomas. And all of a sudden, the next week, Thomas comes and said, oh, my God. Somebody, uh, uh, an active shooter came into our place. And was shooting up everything. And for some reason, I had to exit door out. That's how it works. So in your prayer life, as you're spending time with God, give God time to put people in your spirit to pray for. If he comes to you, you want to know what he's saying? When God puts somebody in your heart, he is trusting you. He's saying that your prayer matters. Why? Why would he ask Jerome to pray for somebody if he if he if Jerome if he already knew Jerome's prayer is hitting the ceiling? He gonna ask if he asked Jerome to pray, it's because Jerome can connect to heaven. So if God puts somebody in your heart, he's pretty much saying, I'm giving you authority to pray for this right now. You are good. Your words matter. So here, now I want to show you these, uh, show you verse 17, because, because I, I, sometimes we don't think we have this much power, but look at verse 17 in, in, in James chapter 5. He says, Elias, or Elijah in the Old Testament, was a man subject to like passions as we are. Meaning he says, Elijah was a man, just like y'all dealing with, dealing with struggles, temptations, lust, all that. He said, Elijah was not no different from us. And look what he says. He says, and he prayed earnestly, that it might not rain. <laughs> and guess what happened? It didn't rain. For three years and six months. He said this man's prayer stopped heaven. And oh Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. My brain is expanding. Look at verse 18. After the three and a half years. He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her, her fruit. <laughs> he said the reason why this man had that much power to pray in prayer, and the reason why he put that right after verse uh, 16, because he's trying to say when you pray for others, God listens. So he uses Elijah to say, listen, let me show you a man who used this principle in the Old Testament, and he wasn't even praying for somebody else. He was praying for rain to stop. And God stopped it. He says, can you imagine the kind of prayer you pray for? if you pray for your nephews? If you pray for your nieces, if you pray for your cousins, if you pray for your parents, if you, if you start, you don't have to be at their house to fix it. Sometimes open your mouth in prayer. That can fix it. Because we be trying to fix stuff too much. That's I, I used to be Mr. Fixer Upper. You know, somebody had an issue. My first thing was to go over and try to put my hands on it and help. And sometimes that didn't help. So you know what I started learning to do? When people say I have a problem, guess what the first? Somebody take a wild guess what's the first thing I do now. Why, why didn't I know that a long time ago, Marie? It's, it's, it's not expensive. I don't have to waste gas to go. <laughs> I can do it right there from the car. And I can get more done in prayer than driving across town trying to drag somebody out of Sodom. Abraham was still in his tent that whole time when he, when he got this thing going. The man never went to Sodom after that prayer with the, the encounter with the angels to snatch his nephew off. He stayed there and the angels went to do his thing. And 
Next thing you know, his nephew is saved. So as of today, what you don't realize is that what the devil is trying to attack all of us in our prayer life is that when you get done praying and asking God for your daily provisions and, and you're praying for all these other things you're pouring out your soul, the next thing the devil is going to want to do is say, OK, 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 yeah, you're good. Your prayer life is changing, but just don't pray for nobody else. Be selfish. Because you don't realize that your selfishness is going to actually rob you later, because now God is going to have to find somebody to pray for you one time. And when that, he comes to that person, that person will be like, I'm tired. The same way you said, I'm tired. Because <laughs> you reap what you sow. So I don't know about y'all. As of today, no more selfishness. Everybody say no more selfishness. Think about other people. That's why he says the healing takes place when you start praying for other people. So guess what? We're going to pray for Marie. We're going to pray for Keita's business. Do you know, y'all, do y'all know what, y'all, do y'all want to know what would happen if everybody prayed for her business? So let me give y'all a little peek in Acts chapter, I believe it's 10 or, no, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 12, I believe. Peter's about to get killed. <laughs> He's about to get killed, Jerome. I literally killed, head cut off, killed, executed. And guess what? The people started praying, Sharice. And guess, somebody tell me what happened to Peter that night. This man was in, they had so many prison guards around him because they was like, this man, and the angel came and still set that man free. Peter was up in prison getting ready to get killed. An angel came and delivered that man because the people were praying. So if an angel can set people out of prison, do you, don't you think if we all came together and prayed for one person's business that God ain't going to answer? So now you can see, watch this, now you can see why the devil want us to not like each other. Because <laughs> if I don't like you, I ain't going to pray for you. Uh-oh. So he'll, he'll go start making issues happen. So if I have an issue with Jeremy, if I have an issue with Dora, if God put her on my heart to pray for her, I don't want to see her blessed. And we can be in the same community, but I'm praying that she don't get blessed. What kind of mess? You see how the devil sneak in? So for step nine, pray for others. Your prayer for others is going to help people. There are so many people right now who do not have the connection with God like you have. They don't have the connection with God like you have. And God needs you to go in there for that person. That person's mind ain't right right now. So you got to go in and you're the one who's intelligent. You're the one who understand the kingdom principles. You're the one who have connection to your heavenly father. You're the one who have to go in and say, okay, God, I pray for my friend. I know they don't know you right now, but father, I'm asking you, please, please keep them from that abusive relationship. Keep them, Lord God, from making this decision. You have the power to do that. As opposed to letting them make the fool out of themselves, get in relationships that they shouldn't get in and go down a, a path that they shouldn't go down. And guess what? And you sit back and you just look at them and say, wow, that's a shame. <laughs> Honestly, would y'all, would y'all appreciate it if I was like, if I, if God put, if you were, if you were going literally down the wrong path and I knew the path was wrong, I knew it. I was so clear. The end of this path is death. But because I didn't want to offend you by telling you the truth. I watch you go right into that pit. And then after you're in the pit, you ask me, why did this happen to me? And then I tell you, I knew it all the time, but I was just afraid to tell you. How, what, how, many, how many of you here will have respect for me? Help Jesus, not one hand. Come on, somebody got to have the love of God in your heart. <laughs> Nobody? But I was trying to protect you. I, I cared about your feelings. I, was, I, didn't, wanna, I didn't want you to be offended. Y'all, y'all, you, you wouldn't respect me? Even though I was trying to help you, with, I, I was trying to help you not hurt. And then I told you later, after you're hurting really bad, eternally or, 
or something that you can't get out. And then I tell you, I sh I'm please, you know, I'm, can you forgive me? Because I knew you were going down. I knew you were walking into a bomb, but I was just too afraid to tell you. Would you respect me? You know how many people are doing that today? I know this person has got a one-way ticket to hell right now, and they don't know it. I know that they're going. I have some answers for them, and I might even go pray for them or witness to them. That's what we're doing to these people. We're letting them just walk right into it. And so God says, okay, okay, no, 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 no. Just you see where they're going, pray for them. Pray that God will open their eyes the way your eyes was open. So if you infuse praying for other people in your prayer life, I promise you, I promise you, your prayer life will be transformed even more. So you've got all these steps so far that's helped you to understand about prayer. And so when you go into prayer, that's what I'm saying, you can be in prayer for hours. If you start praying for people, you can be in prayer for hours. If you pray for your needs and you make sure your needs are being met, I'm telling you, there is some, there is some time, oh my God, I, as, sometimes I have so many experiences of things that I've seen. I don't want to bore you with all these testimonies, but sometimes I, I remember stories of things that happen not because I said I wanted it. There's sometimes things happen because other people were praying for me. They, so there was one, I'll just put it, I'll just tell you one. There was one, one, uh, one situation where um, that's why it's good to have good leaders. It's good to have good leaders in your life. <laughs> good leaders will will sometimes say things that you may not like, but later you'll be like, thank you, Jesus. So back in 2004, uh, you know, I thought I thought it was somebody that I liked. And I thought this was somebody I'm like, oh, that's I'm I'm sold that this person it's going to be for me. So, <laughs> I, that's why I, I, I believe in being in a community because com when you're in a community, you have people who's looking and watching for you. So, um, my leader at the time, I was, you know, still young in ministry. I was kind of rebounding from, from going through a hard season in my life. So I'm like the first, this person gave me interest. I'm like, okay, I, this is, this is, I'm going to, this is definitely going to be the person I'm going to uh, spend the rest of my life with. And I'm young, had no money, had nowhere to put this person if I even got married to him. Just a hot mess. And do you know, my leader told me one time we was in the, we was in the office and we were talking and we were talking about, you know, you know the things that was the church or whatever. And then on my way out, he, he, he said it so it's cool. He said, stay focused. So I said, oh, I, I, you know, y'all know how, y'all know how we say these prideful statements. Oh, I am. And I said that. I said, oh, oh, I am. He, he looked at me and said, stay focused. Stay focused. And, you know, it kind of rubbed me wrong because I'm thinking like, I am focused, you know. But he was, what he was telling me was he saw that she was distracting me. Now, the part I want to tell you um, is the stuff that I found out <laughs> about the same person that I, that, that I was just so sure the stuff that I found out three months later I'm like oh okay I see why he needed me to stay focused <laughs> because I was about to lose it if I would have connected with that person stuff came out that I said you got to be I, but I was blinded by it but guess what the reason why I use that story is because later when me and uh, my wonderful leader talked, he said, I saw that you were going down the wrong path and I had to say something to wake you up because I was praying for you that you don't make a foolish decision. So his praying for me looked like this. Oh, I'm focused. I'm focused. You know, so he didn't force me. He just told me to stay focused. And then he went and did what we talking about here. He prayed for me. So watch this, uh, Kita. So next couple of months I started discovering stuff without his without him even being around hmm oh you was with that person too why is this person telling me they're com they're confiding in me and the person they confide in me in with is the person that I'm in okay so I, 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 should, should I go deeper <laughs> out of all the people you can confide in you come to me and you don't know that the person you talking to me about is the person that 
I believe God is my <laughs> and God said oh because somebody's praying for you let me let you know what you was about to walk into and you can see it because that's why you need people to pray for you because sometimes you walk around I know God spoke to me let other people pray for you because sometimes you be blind it sounds like this God opened their eyes let them see my, our army and all of a sudden the servants can see <laughs> oh man <laughs> okay tell y'all some funny stories but I just gave y'all a quick example of why we need to pray for each other because if he didn't pray for me guess what I would have probably kept on walking Jeremy I would have kept on walking talking about oh nah everything's good and then put a ring on it miss that blessing and was still and then find out Jerome all the stuff that I found out three months later but thank God somebody prayed for me y'all know that y'all know that old school song somebody prayed for me had me on their mind <laughs> but listen listen to this part took the time to pray for me and then it goes I'm so glad they prayed I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. That song is one of the most truest songs because somebody definitely prayed for me. Somebody definitely prayed for y'all too because some of y'all was about to make some crazy choices in the past. Go 10 years ago. Go back 10 years. Everybody go back 10 years in your mind. Go back 10 years and look at some of the dumbest decisions we all was going to make 10 years ago. <laughs> you stay back there, right? Think about it. Look at your look at your life ten years ago, and tell me somebody wasn't praying. Half of us would be in the penitentiary. <laughs> Some of us would have been dead. <laughs> Think about it. But somehow you here today. Somebody, you was on somebody's mind, and guess what? God is gonna start putting other people on your mind because you have power in prayer let's bow our heads at this time father we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy lord i'm asking you tonight god that you will help us in our prayer life god that we will take the time to intercede and pray for other people lord god help us not to be selfish disciples that only pray for ourselves but help us to pray for other people god as you laid them on our heart God, you, our king, the kingdom you here have here on earth, God, requires us, God, to be salt and light. So, Lord God, you have put us next to these co-workers. You have put us in these neighborhoods. You have put us, Lord God, in these regions and these states and these cities for a reason. And God, I know one of the assignments for us is to pray. You want us to pray for other people who don't know how to pray for themselves. So tonight, God, I pray that you would give us uh, uh, activation in our heart, God, that we will begin to pray. Pray for other people who need to hear from you, who need an experience from you, who need a touch from you. So, God, I thank you today for revealing this truth to us in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. For those of you who are watching, if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, I am here to invite you into God's kingdom. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And guess what? He is soon to come back. It's all the signs of the times are here. We are definitely in the last days. You don't have much time. Uh, your expiration date is coming soon. So we want to give you the opportunity to have eternal life by accepting Christ Jesus into your heart. So if this is you, I'm going to ask you to please repeat after me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I ask you today that you will cleanse me from all of my sins. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you died on the cross for my sins and that you are the son of God. Change me and make me new in jesus name amen if that is you the angels in heaven are rejoicing we are rejoicing here at fuel station church we are so honored and blessed that you uh, you was with us and again this week please take time and pray for other people because god is trying to get to others but he need your prayers to do it in jesus name and we'll see you next week let's give god one more hand praise everybody